What are you doing? Oh, I'm playing with my new toy here. Uh, this is that Ellis 1800 series horizontal bandsaw that I just got not too long ago. And I thought, okay, I'll cut a few test pieces with it. I've done some small stuff with it. Now let's give it something big to chew on. <laughs> so, this is Pokey, by the way. Hi, Pokey. Hi, Pokey. Uh, this is a five foot tall, so it's a 300 cubic foot compressed gas bottle. It's an old uh, oxygen bottle, I believe. And I'm making a big three armed sound sculpture, you know, a bell sculpture. And I was going to use these cylinders for it, for the bells themselves. So and now it's time to chop the bottom off of one of them. The way I used to do it in the good old days was I had this special tool. <laughs> this is a, an old belt sander belt that broke at one point or another. And I thought, wait a minute, that's a really nice straight edge right there. So what I found myself doing was just wrapping it right around the cylinder, pulling it nice and tight. As long as it met up on both sides, that meant the belt was straight. Everything was lined up. It was in a nice straight line all the way around. Then I could just take my soapstone, draw my draw a line all the way around it, get this out of the way, and then break out the plasma cutter. You know, before I had a plasma cutter, I did a couple of these with a jigsaw. Oh my God, it took forever. But normally, plasma cutter, real careful, just ease it all the way around, chop it off, and then spend you know about an hour cleaning it up, cleaning up the, the dross inside. Right, and it's smooth, you, know, you always get a little bit of wiggle, you always get a little wobble, it never comes out perfectly straight. So it'll be fun to cut it with this and just see how straight and smooth and square it comes out. And save some time at the same time. So one of the reasons I wanted this saw was because of the throat, because of how much it could cut. Uh, I believe it's at 13 inches. Not only this way, but also from the backstop to the stop here on the, on the vise. I had to move the vise in order to put the cylinder in here. It was bolted in up here. I just pull out those two bolts, slide the whole thing back, bolt it in here. There's another set of bolts back here even, if you wanted to move it back just a little bit farther even, to take advantage of the rest of the throat. So you had something really monster inside there. But it's held in nice and steady. It's flat against the table. And then I've got a little stand on the other end just to hold up the other end of the cylinder while everything's going on on the other end. Now, I did have to spend a few minutes, you know, down on my knees. You know how I love to get on my knees. <laughs> and the easiest way I found just to make sure this thing was flat and a very important trip, really, is just look in here. Look at where, the, where your piece of metal is actually sitting on the bed of the saw itself. If you can see daylight, it's not flat. It's not flat against the saw. And several reasons why that's important. First, you want a straight parallel cut, you know, or, you know, 90 degree cut on the other end. You don't want it cutting at an angle because your stock isn't straight. And you don't want to trap the saw blade. If this was up too high, if it was not touching on this end, but it was touching on the other end, that's not good. What's going to happen is you're going to make that cut down through there, and as you get down towards the very end of the cut, your waste piece, because that's where all the weight it is, is actually going to try to move in and close in that gap and pinch that saw blade. That's not good. Now, if you're going to error, error on the side of this being down a little, but it's better not to error at all. What we did was just take a piece of paper, try to shove a piece of paper in there, shove a piece of paper in the other end. Nope, not quite. Pick it up, move it, gesture stand a little bit, get it to where you couldn't take a single sheet of paper and slip it in on either end. Now we're good. So let me fire this puppy up and put it to work. So this is probably going to take, you know, I'm guessing somewhere in the probably five to 10 minute range, so I'm trying to get you a cold drink. Come on back and you can see it finish up. Oh, 
I'm still guessing at just how fast to let it feed. I know this is about a quarter inch wall, so I'm going to want it to go real slow, just so we don't overheat the blade.
sharp in places. Glad I'm wearing gloves. But beautiful, beautiful cut. You know, I'm sure it's nice and straight and square and smooth. So for this L, this bandsaw, the horizontal bandsaw, that, that's its first big job, at least here in my shop. Uh, great, great job. So I'm going to clean this mess up, and then I'm going to get to work on the other end and get the ring on it so I can hang that puppy up and hear what it sounds like. You're going to look right over there and click that subscribe button for me. We'll see you next time. she went.